Hello, welcome to the Blessing Report with the Meat Not Milk podcast with our relationship segment, Agape. Today we are talking about stop asking your partner how many people they have slept with. But let me hear from you and leave a comment below. Do you need to know how many sexual partners the person you're in a relationship with has been with? So, yo, let's get to the show. Stop asking how many people um, they have slept with and don't ask people because it is grossly inappropriate and I'm giving you the top five reasons you shouldn't ask. So I want to start with just the weird undertones of the question um, is hinting at that need to be addressed and also just some tendencies when it comes to male manipulation of women within the church from a man's perspective and so I'm going to be very honest I'm going to be very transparent and I'm going to say like yo these are things that I have done in church as a man of God and as a Christian man I'm not saying that I am proud of it but I'm just saying that it happened so I'm going to start with two stories Um, one starts with my friend John Wood check him out at Poet John Wood and also his clothing line Stained Glass And basically, we just had a conversation where I had to confess and repent um, to him. And at the end of the conversation, we were just came to like the same conclusion and the same thing. There is absolutely no benefit in a relationship for singles, for dating people, engaged people, or married people to ask or even to know how many sexual partners the person you are in a relationship with has slept with. And so there's nothing uh, beneficial for you as the recipient or the other person as the giver of information. And the second story comes from um, this meme that I made of myself um, last year that went pretty viral about the eight different Christian men that you will meet in church. And people ask how was I able to be so specific and how was it able to be like so funny and accurate and it it was because yo the material was based heavily on myself and on my friends so one that people really resonated with (laughs) was um, the fact that the text um, said a character by the name of Mr. Warren And it was so um, accurate, in fact, that one of my friends sent me a text saying, yo, I have done this. And um, he's definitely a man of God, but I think the fact that we have both, and it was based off of me, um, have done this thing individually, um, and we never talked about it, it's just hinting at like, yo, this is a problem within the church. And in the Mr. Lukewarm category, it said, that he asks to hear your testimony because he knows that you will overshare intimate information too soon to learn how far he can push your boundaries. So that is just something I'm saying like, yo, I'm not saying it's right. It's definitely wrong, definitely sin, and definitely the sin of manipulation, which is the sin of witchcraft. But I'm just saying I've done it. Um, because of the fact that women over talk in general <laughs> in general and um, especially Christian women overshare. So I'm just going to give y'all some good game uh, ladies that the best talkers are actually the best listeners because yo women will overshare intimate um, material already. But Christian women reveal things too quickly um, that are just not necessary. And so this is just like a thing. People are very uncomfortable when it comes to silence. And if you listen long enough and if you wait long enough, people will just over talk and will reveal things on their own accord or if you just ask because there will be an intimate connection um, when it comes to just material and closeness where you actually 
think you're closer to someone because you're oversharing, but intimacy isn't being given on their end at all, right? And so this comes from Proverbs 10, 19. Too much talk leads to sin. Be sensible and keep your mouth shut. So a lot of people, um, especially this new generation, like Generation Z, but especially millennials, we are desperate for um, intimacy and connection because of like social media and the lack of genuine connection and the need for less surface level um, relationships. So in a desperate state, we overshare. And this is how you can actually put yourself in a dangerous scenario. So just a word of wisdom, um, go off of Proverbs 4, 23, above all things and above all else, guard your heart um, be, um, because everything you do flows from it. So when it comes to men and women, we both build intimacy and connection through um, sex and like uh, with like your marriage and with your spouse, but also through connection. I think we forget about the power of words in the Bible. And it's like, yo, God created all of the universe and creation through his word. So likewise, words have much power. And so we need to be more careful about stewarding our words and not having senseless talk that, yo, if you talk long enough, you will lead into sin. So there's just this weird cultural thing where everyone thinks that uh, intimacy and everything is just tied to your sexuality. And somehow sex and intimacy have become blurred. But that's just a lie and it's wrong and it's not true. And it's just a false dichotomy that if you don't tell me um, your number or your body count or basically like your sexual experiences, you're withholding intimacy or genuine connection or withholding um, secrets. But if I tell you, yo, what my biggest fear is, is that not us being intimate? If I don't tell you what our, my dreams are, is that not us being intimate? Is that not us um, being close? If I don't share like stories about my childhood, is that not intimacy and me trusting you with very vulnerable material? It just seems like somehow testimony and sexuality when it comes to how many people you slept with, when it comes to relationships, it's the ultimate intimacy, but it's just not. It's just a lack of maturity and wisdom. And yes, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony, but not to the point of being desperate for connection and intimacy. So here are the five reasons why. You just should not be asking people how many people they have slept with. Neither should you feel um, obligated to disclose that information. Number five, why do you want to know? And why do they want to know? So we're basing this off of 1 Corinthians 10, 23. I have the right to do anything, you say, but not everything is beneficial. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is constructive. All right. So that is just a, um, a real thing. Like if you're single, if you're dating, if you're engaged, or even if you are married, why does knowing that number benefit you as the giver of the information, but also you as the recipient? Why are you asking? And this seems really immature and very young um, to do. And it just seems <laughs> like an overstepping of boundaries. And you need boundaries in communication, just like you need um, boundaries in contact and like touching and stuff, all right? So number four, it breeds comparison. And this is unhealthy. And um, just in short, the reason um, people want to know is just to be like, hey, I wanna know how I stack up. Like legitimately, me and my friend John, my friend John and I, were just trying to say like, hey, is there actual any beneficialness or a necessity where knowing this number will help the relationship or you as an individual. And it's like, no, it's literally just an ego trip. And it's just um, this thing of, am I better than the person you were with before? And so with that, it just makes for a lot of toxicity 
when it comes to um, your own personal work as the asker is like dang am I stacking up am I not to be too graphic am I <laughs> endowed am I uh, measuring up am I good and um, in short this is another um, thing that people say like hey you and this is just a lie from the devil that hey you have to sleep with a person uh, you have to test drive the car um, before you buy like before marriage so you know if it's good or not but um, here's the thing you can't know what good or bad sex is if you have not indulged in sin in the first place and so if you are a virgin and like yo you only have one sexual partner you have nothing to compare it to. So you're actually having the best sex ever, right? And so um, likewise, when it comes to comparison, we see that there's only a, it's just a low self-esteem that's coming from a need to know the number. But yo, it's not gonna add to anything but just pride or maybe some sorrow because uh, you may not measure up. And so it's like, yo, you don't need to know for real. All right, number three um, reason you should not know and you shouldn't ask or tell people your number is that you can trigger lust or trauma in yourself or your partner. Asking may not be a sin, but it's definitely not wise. And so here's the thing. I think that um, people who are actively practicing celibacy and abstinence, I think we do some borderline sinful things where um, the Bible says, submit to God, flee from sin. And the devil, I mean, um, submit to God, um, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. But because we're practicing abstinence and celibacy, we try to live vicariously through trying to come as close as possible to sin without sinning and thinking like, oh, that doesn't count. So um, we know that the scripture in the Bible says in the gospel is like, yo, if you look on a woman to lust and what you do in your mind, that stuff counts. And so when you ask, uh, like hear someone's testimony or asking their body count, I think you're trying to get off like these little kicks and like your knee because basically we have no outlets <laughs> like sexual desires is just like primal in our flesh and so they have to go somewhere and so maybe you want to get aroused maybe you want lust um, just um, going off of your flesh and your primal nature but we are supposed to go off of our spiritual nature and supposed to go off of um, things that are godly, things that are above and not beneath. And so when you ask, it's like, yo, you can evoke and trigger something within yourself or in the person when it comes to lust. And yo, you have to be a good steward over one another in relationships. But also, you may trigger someone unintentionally in trauma. And so we see like there's, especially in like particular communities, there's more um, molestation and rape. Yeah, right? And so I think that people um, knowingly or unknowingly ask this question in order to arouse something that they may not want to be awakened and it may lead to more trauma in your relationship than you would ever expect. So yeah. All right, number two, it's going to stifle um, sexual intimacy in marriage. All right, so we see this in um, porn rates when it comes to um, just marriage is that if you are actively engaging in porn and ma <laughs> masturbation before and during um, your marriage, it actually um, limpens your libido. Um, so in short, you're not going to want to have as much sex. So I know I guess I'm speaking more to the married couples than anything else, because if you're not married, you're single. <laughs> so you're abstinent and you're celibate. <laughs> But in short, um, you're going to be comparing, um, so let's start with, it's going to limp in your libido. So your sex drive is actually going to lower by watching porn, but also thinking about other people that you have had sexual experiences with. So um, when you go into the bedroom and you're like, hey, I want to try this out because it's worked on, so I always use Samantha. This worked on Samantha. Hey, um, Winston like this last time, so I'm going to use this on Bob. 
but when you do this you're actually stifling your um, sexual experience because you need to learn your wife and husband as an individual they may not like what <laughs> Samantha or Winston like doing and so if you want um, anything and this is why it's saying like yo don't test out the car before you, um, you do it or whatever it's like yo you have to learn people as individuals like you can maybe be able to take some things into the bedroom or whatever but you're also taking in um, past memories um, soul ties and definitely um, unclean spirits um, if you had a spirit of like sexual immorality or lust because yo that's the only way we know all this stuff that we're taking into our marriage so we don't want to bring those things into our decor all right and then the last one the biggest one is like yo don't ask something that you really don't want to know and so um, here's the thing I think there's an undertone that's um, tied between masculinity and manhood and conquering women um, sexually and being dominant and so there's like somehow being lesser um, as a man is being sexual in experience but being lesser as a woman is being sexually promiscuous and so that's just a dumb dumb a uh, double standard where it's like yo how can you be sexually experienced as a man if women are being sexually prudish as women is like yo you 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 don't want a i'm just gonna use the word you don't want a slut as a man but you don't want to be a virgin as a man so you need women to sleep with you if you don't want to be a virgin and you need them um somehow to be pure it, it, that, and that's the dumbest thing too is that um somehow women's purity is tied to their sexual experience but men's purity is not it's like yo why are you looking at her as less pure for having a big number but looking at you as a conqueror as a man for having a bigger number it's just dumb and it's a double standard and so either we believe the gospel of jesus christ if we're in um a new uh if we're at if we're christians now or we don't and that comes from second corinthians 5 17. this means that anyone who belongs to christ has become a new person the old is gone and a new life has come and some translation says like yo you are a new creation in christ jesus so in short yo I can't think of a woman lesser because she's had a lot of sexual partners and I have not. Neither can a woman look down on a man for having less sexual partners if that doesn't add to his manhood or to his um, masculinity. So yo, those are my five reasons I think you shouldn't ask anybody and neither should you tell <laughs> someone how many people you have, uh, have slept with sexually. But yo, let me hear from you. Um, leave a comment below. Do you need to know how many sexual partners um, your partner has been in a relationship with? Um, comment below. Yo, thank you for listening to the Bless Room Report on the Meat Not Milk podcast with our relationship segment, Agape. Make sure to leave a comment, a review, and um, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, Spotify, iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or anywhere you're listening. Um, and make sure to come back next week for our Relationship Thursday series where we are talking about, yo, Christians should not be sexy. And make sure if you want to support the podcast, um, to um, join the Patreon, support us monetarily, or just share um, in the material. And yo, I thank you for watching. And yo, God loves you. Appreciate you. Um, check out a playlist wherever you're listening. Subscribe to the channel and all that stuff. Check you out next week, next Thursday on the Agape segment, Meet Not Milk podcast. Yo, Christians aren't supposed to be sexy.